I've come to Deptford in South East London and pleased to be visiting Cockpit Arts, which is a business incubation centre for makers. And I've come to see Darren Apiegi, who is a recipient of the Worshipful Company of Turner's uh, Award for Studio Space, which we provided for one year back in 2017. And I'm pleased to be able to talk to him now about his journey and his experience in lockdown. Um, I, I, re I think lockdown has enabled me to firstly just spend time, more time in my studio. Um, London can be so busy at times and it can be quite difficult to have time to fully focus on my practice. So with, I guess the positive of Corona, it's enabled me to have more studio time and develop my work. Obviously a downside is the decrease in sales, which which has affected everyone, every business, so it's understandable. But also, Corona has enabled me to develop resilience that I didn't know I had. I mean, I think a lot of businesses are suffering at the moment, and everyone's sort of in the same situation. And so it does make you, when you go through difficult situations, once you overcome it, it makes you stronger, and you do learn more about yourself and how you can develop your practice. I definitely feel through Corona it's, enabled, it's made me realise the importance of having a variety of different skills. So not just focusing on turning, which is important to me, but at the same time helping other people. So not just focusing on my practice, but taking part in panels. So I've been fortunate enough to be part of panels with the Crafts Council and Copy Arts. The origin of my practice starts from originally I'm from Ghana. Um, both my parents are from Ghana, so they grew up there and they came here. And I was born and bred in London. Um, and from a young age, I've been surrounded by, you know, African art, which is very much rough and raw. And that kind of you can see that through my work as well and the textures that I use. I accidentally came across wood turning, so I went to University of the Arts London the Camberwell site and I found that in my second year where we had to learn a new skill and the lathe happened to be free and that's where I kind of developed my love for turning. It was by chance and I found it very therapeutic just chipping away and not thinking about the outcome but just loving the process. And so it was, it was very therapeutic and it was organic, for, uh, organic to me and that's still part of my my practice, my work is, I would say, very much an organic process, in my opinion. Since uh, lockdown has eased, it has uh, enabled me to get in contact again with galleries and take part in exhibitions. So, for example, I have two exhibitions happening for London Design Festival and one another one for the London Craft Week. Um, it's not, it wouldn't be how you usually go into a gallery, the numbers will be reduced, but it's still an opportunity to speak to customers and actually speak to people, which is key for me personally as a maker, to have direct contact with people and understand how they see my work, which is key to my practice as well. So prior to Corona, I was accepted to take part in a residency in Scotland called Cove Park so this would have enabled me to develop my skills further um, or just give me time to explore which I feel is key as a maker or as a wood turner you just sometimes you just need time to explore make mistakes fail and learn it's been postponed for a year but also it gives me time to prepare myself further for for the residency which is not necessarily a bad thing you can never prepare too much so regardless of, of what has happened I'm very much optimistic. So with the Workshop for Company of Turner's Award it has enabled me firstly just to have time to explore and the great thing about Copy Arts and the award is that it's 24 hours and so I could come into my studio at 2 o'clock in the night and just make and that's the beauty of it that's it's quite rare to see and it's nice I, I love waking up early in the morning and just coming down to my studio first thing it's just a great way for me to start start my day especially in the summer when the sun's out so i love that aspect of it and 
I very much feel privileged in that sense to to have that opportunity to to come into my studio anytime I please. Thank, thank you, Darren, for, for uh, taking us through your journey. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned the Banksia nut, which um, has a wonderful texture, and I'm wondering if you can tell us a bit about it. So the Banksia nut is very much a peculiar type of uh, material. It was discovered in Australia by Joseph Banks, who was a botanist and part of Captain Cook's crew. So when I work with the material, I try to embrace each layer. So it has three layers. Um, the first layer has more of like a crispy texture. The second layer has more of like a velvet felt feel to it. And then the third layer has more of a wooden texture. And so these are all natural aesthetics to the material. So I aim to incorporate each layer when I work with the material. It's almost like an onion when I carve on a lathe. Just, it just reveals itself while I carve into the material.